education and mobility instructor's name was Jeff Elliott. Once again, we waited for a stranger to come into the living room. Jeff strode into the living room, radiating confidence and energy. He hadn't even opened his mouth and I was intimidated. That night, Jeff explained what he could teach me, what orientation and mobility is, and then he taught my mother, my father, and me sighted guide techniques. The next Saturday, he picked me up and we went to a nearby church. <clears throat> when he put my first cane in my hands, I took it and I thought, when I learn to use this cane, it's going to be my means for independent mobility. There's a lot more to using a long cane than just sticking it out in front of yourself and waving it around. So we began in a big room. Jeff showed me how to grip the cane, where to position my hand, that's going to come up later, the correct arc to swing the cane, and how to stay in step. Over and over again, I walked up and down in the big room. Finally, Jeff took me out in the hall and told me to go for it. And I did. For the first time in weeks, I was walking independently, concentrating on keeping my hands centered. Remember, that's gonna come up again. Swinging the cane the correct arc and staying in step, I was drawn up short when wham! The cane tip collided with the wall at the end of the hall. Turning to Jeff, I called, look, it works. It stopped me before I walked slap into this wall. <laughs> Learning the skills of blindness was the easy part. Emotional adjustment to blindness is tough. Pulling yourself out of suicidal depression is tough. Combine both at the same time and you have an emotional tsunami. It was spring and I had a problem. I loved the transition from the dormancy of winter to the vibrant lushness of spring in the south. I used to swing up bareback on my horse and go tearing through the woods, scouring the forest floor for the first wildflowers. I loved the march of the spring colors across the hillsides. First, the distinctive dark red as the maples bloomed. Then the improbable fuchsia of the red buds mingled with the white of the flowering dogwood. I'd never see that again. I needed to talk to somebody, and it needed to be somebody who understood about adjustment to blindness. I called Jeff and invited him out to dinner. That night, in a restaurant at the mall, I tried to explain. I'm learning all these new skills, and it's really great, I said but it's like my emotions aren't keeping up. I go to do something and get drawn up short because I have to remember how to do it now that I can't see it. Or I'll go to do something and get drawn up short because I haven't learned how to do it yet. And now with spring approaching, I'm remembering all of the flowering trees, shrubs, and flowers in the woods, in the yards, on the hillsides and I'll never be able to see that again. I don't know, Jeff, is this normal? Will it ever get easier? That night, Jeff told me about Father Thomas Carroll. Father Carroll, incidentally, was once chaplain for the then Veterans Administration, and he was very interested in adjustment to blindness on the part of soldiers who had been blinded in World War II. Father Carroll's concept is that you can't move forward and develop your life as a person with new blindness until you're willing to let go of your sighted life, of your sighted self. It's holding on to all of the old thoughts, notions, and ideas that hold you back. Once you're willing to let go of your sighted life, then you're free. You're free to move forward into your life as a person who's blind. There it was. Just that morning, I had stood in my closet, all annoyed that I had to flip through the garments one by one, reading those little braille tags, just to find the shirt that I wanted to wear. Instead of getting on with it and doing what needed to be done, I had stood there angry, 
that I couldn't do it the way I used to. There were to be many setbacks in the weeks, months, and years ahead, but that was the beginning of my willingness to look and move forward.